Hello everyone and welcome to my video comparing old D&D to new D&D. Let me start things off by giving you a little heads up on my background. I played AD&D 2nd Edition as a kid like everyone I played with did. We had regular games and towards the end of the 2nd Edition's lifespan I even DM'd a few times. It was actually some of the most fun I've ever had gaming. Since this time I've seen D&D editions come and go and although I've not been around to see them all, I certainly have been around long enough to see some major changes in the brand. So the first D&D came out in 1974, with AD&D shortly behind it in 1977. Then came AD&D 2nd Edition in 1989, with the 3rd Edition being introduced in the year 2000. Then 4th in 2008, and finally 5th Edition in 2014. Now the reason I show you this is to show you the longevity of AD&D and AD&D 2nd Edition, in comparison to the new editions from 2000 onward. You would think that the D&D recipe would have been perfected by now. They certainly had what I consider to be a near-perfect product with AD&D 2nd Edition. It seems, however, that the longevity of each edition is getting shorter and shorter. I think this all has to do with the changing of the parent company. Back in 1999, we got news that Wizards of the Coasts, makers of Magic the Gathering card game, was going to buy out TSR, owners of D&D. I immediately felt chills run down my spine. Magic seemed to be like a fly-by-night card game, especially in comparison to The Rock that was my D&D. How could this company that had only been around for a handful of years buy out D&D? It was baffling. They were sure to tamper with the D&D recipe that I'd grown to love, and tamper they did. When the next edition of D&D came out, it was obvious that Wizards was pushing their own people into D&D, and the old guard was being phased out. The dark, gritty, realistic tone that had been set in the AD&D books was washed away, and this whitewashing was even further reinforced when the toy company Hasbro bought out Wizards of the Coast only making things more child-friendly. D&D was very adult-oriented up until now, and that was not in parallel with Hasbro's identity at all. Now, I don't want to seem like a grumpy old man, but this is pretty heartbreaking, like your parents replacing your family dog after they've run him over in the driveway. You want it to be the same, but it's not. I gave 3rd Edition a chance when it came out, but nothing really took root with me or my group of players. It just didn't resonate with us at all. I even bought 4th Edition, and I couldn't get into this either. I've since played Magic in later years, and I have to say I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's still not really my flavor like D&D is, but it was some fun nonetheless. It's not like I dislike the gaming type, either. I think that something such as a card game could have worked well in the realm of D&D, but really my entire issue boils down to one issue with Wizards of the Coasts. The art and design direction. Now with Wizards of the Coasts came this new cartoony art style, heavy with colored filters and saturated colors. I really find this to be an eyesore, especially coming from the art of the second edition in all its dark, gritty, and realistic tones. This was the flavor I'd grown to love, and I was not happy at all to see this new trend in every subsequent edition of the books. What's going to be next if this child-friendly art focus continues? How far will Hasbro push a more child-friendly aesthetic on a game with its roots in dark adult fantasy? We have yet to see, but I fear the worst. One other thing I want to point out. Those old D&D paintings were all done by hand with real paint. Why is it that I find them to be superior to these new paintings in every way, especially with all of modern painting's digital advantages? Now don't get me wrong, I don't hate those paintings. They're all good in their own right, it's just not my taste at all. I just feel that it's watering down the brand with a more childlike tone, and unsuitable for a game where you're decapitating orcs and bedding elf maidens. D&D used to be filled with realistic-looking naked succubi, an undead that would give you nightmares. I find this need to smear everything in pink and purple tones disgusting. Stop pushing your saturated palettes on me. Perhaps the most insulting change to D&D is the degradation of the miniature scene, and most insulting of all, the officially branded D&D minis that are the most horrible representations of miniature gaming I have ever seen. Period. How could D&D lend its name to these? How could a game company put out miniatures that are so terrible? Metal miniatures are the standard for me. They weigh more detail than anything made out of plastic. Not to mention those horrible pre-painted plastic minis. Perhaps the high-grade resin is the future? However, I've not seen enough to tell. They do look pretty nice from what I can tell from online photos, though. At the end of the day, Hasbro, just like TSR, is all about selling books. Every edition had a ton of unnecessary books. Even the old editions. And if people will buy it every time, then why wouldn't they do it? The difference between Wizards and TSR, though, is that while any of these new editions have only lasted seven years at the very longest, the old advanced editions both lasted longer than a decade. Even if TSR put out a lot of unnecessary supplemental content, 
At least you didn't have to buy an entirely new set of core books. The reason why the new editions are coming out much sooner is simply because putting out new editions is extremely profitable. Just buying the core books alone can cost you more than $100. When you realize that every edition is virtually the same content and a different skin, the entire lure just loses its luster. Pretty much the only rule changes are arbitrary and superficial. Sure, I like the addition of new standard classes and races. It spice things up a bit. But the base structure of the game really did not change that much. Not enough to warrant new additions every handful of years. There is a benefit to this situation, though. For all of us who just love the old books, we can get them now cheaper and cheaper for every new edition that is released. At the end of the day, the rules lie in the hands of the DM anyhow. If you wanted to play a half-orc or a tiefling in second edition, all you had to do was ask your DM. You didn't need a fancy new book filled with virtually the same content. As biased as I am, I realize that everyone has their own personal favorite edition of D&D. Everyone has their own taste. Who am I to completely blaspheme an edition that I disagree with when it might bring others so much fulfillment? The same thing can be said of settings, or even different games altogether. So whatever game you play, have fun. Meanwhile at the ranch, I'll be killing vile undead with my character patterned after Ash Williams, riding into the night, after whatever adventure will have me. Alright everybody, that does it for now, but before you go I just want to turn your attention to the Gygax Memorial Fund. Gary Gygax, the creator of Dungeons & Dragons, his fund is online and you can donate to it. And What this fund does is help maintain his memorial as well as schedule activities and establish scholarships for students in need. So there is a link in the description and you can go and visit that website and donate if you'd like. Thanks for watching everybody. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to my channel too, because there's going to be so much new content coming out in the future. You're not going to want to miss it. And while we're at it, please support the greatest edition of D&D, &D, Advanced D&D, 2nd Edition. Back up forever.